In this presentation, we'll cover the radiographic positioning criteria for the stomach, as well as exam prep and post-procedure evaluation criteria. This exam is commonly referred to as a gastrointestinal series, otherwise known as a GI series, or an upper gastrointestinal series, or UGI. Again, these views will apply primarily to overhead views performed after the radiologist is finished with their fluoroscopic routine, with the exception of a scout KUB. Often the scout KUB image done before the radiologist routine can include the diaphragm and should let us know if there's still any remaining food particles in the stomach that can produce a false positive reading. Additional views include the AP or PA stomach, the RAO stomach, and the right lateral stomach. The LPO is somewhat rare, but we'll cover it anyways. Patient prep for this procedure requires the stomach to be empty, preferably with the colon free of gas and fecal material that could obstruct the view of the stomach. Food and water should be withheld eight to nine hours prior to the exam. If the small intestine will be examined with the stomach. Food is generally withheld following the evening meal the night before the study. Nicotine and gum are thought to stimulate the gastric secretions, so these are often restricted for the same time frame. Double contrast includes barium studies and gas-producing substances such as powder, crystals, pills, or carbonated beverage. Biphasic exams are a combination of single and double contrast exams during the same procedure. Hypotonic duodenography is fairly uncommon. The procedure itself begins with the patient upright. The radiologist may examine the heart and lungs under fluoro and then determine whether the stomach is empty. The patient will be instructed by the radiologist when to drink the barium, and the esophagus is quickly examined within the first two or three swallows. Spot films are taken by the radiologist as needed, and the patient continues to drink until barium fills the stomach. These images determine the size, shape, and position of the stomach and information about peristalsis, the filling and emptying of the duodenal bulb, and any abnormalities in function or contour should be noted as they may affect your positioning for later overhead views. It's important before and during these procedures to include the following. Review clinical history with the patient and document. Make note of any problems they're experiencing, confirm their last meal, and note any previous surgical history involving the stomach. Take note of body habitus as it will influence your positioning later. During the radiologist fluoro routine, identify your positioning landmarks and where the stomach lies in relationship to them. Always use high KVP between 100 and 125 for single contrast barium and 90 to 100 for double contrast. Keep exposure time short to eliminate motion from peristalsis and try to keep voluntary motion at a minimum with clear communication and or immobilization devices if necessary. It's also important to note for double contrast studies where the air and contrast will be depicted for each view. The technologist should be able to identify these views in the event that one needs to be repeated. Remember, contrast always follows gravity. When the patient is supine, the barium will pull in the fundus of the stomach as it lies more posterior than the body and the pylorus. When prone, contrast naturally migrates to the most anterior portion of the stomach following gravity. And when erect, a clear air fluid level should be visualized with air in the fundus. The PA or AP view should have evidence of proper collimation to a 10 by 12 or 11 by 17 field size and include the entire stomach and proximal duodenum. The central ray should enter at the level of the pylorus, which lies approximately 1 to 2 inches above the lower rib margin at L1, L2 level. This may vary with body habitus. Dual contrast studies will include barium in the body of the stomach when prone and barium in the fundus when supine. Note the various positions of the stomach based on body habitus here. For the REO position, the patient should be recumbent and rotated 40 to 70 degrees to visualize the pyloric canal and the duodenum on suspended respiration. The range here is great due to the wide variation of the size, shape, and location of the stomach for each body habitus. The CR should enter at a sagittal plane passing midway between the vertebral column 
and the lateral border of the elevated side, approximately at the lower rib margin, which lies at the L1, L2 level. Evidence of collimation should be present to include the entire stomach and duodenal loop with no superimposition of the pylorus and the duodenal bulb. In other words, the C loop of the duodenum should be in profile. The pylorus should be centered within the field of view with a high KVP exposure technique to visualize the anatomy through the contrast media. Note the air in the fundus in the RAO position as the body and pylorus are closer to the x-ray table. The AP oblique projection is more rare to perform, but depicts the same anatomy with a different contrast distribution pattern. Notice how the contrast is now in the fundus. The only difference between the positioning criteria for this view and the RAO is central ray placement. For the LPO, the CR should enter midway between the xiphoid process and the lower rib margin. Due to the difference in contrast distribution, this view should display the body and the pyloric antrum with double contrast visualization. For the lateral stomach and duodenum, the patient should be placed in the recumbent lateral position. When performing a recumbent right lateral, this demonstrates the right retrogastric space, the duodenal loop, and the, and the duodeno-jejunal junction. This view can also be performed upright as a left lateral to demonstrate the left retrogastric space. This is a rare view to perform. For the recumbent right lateral, align the CR to pass midway between the mid-coronal plane and the anterior surface of the abdomen at approximately the level of L1, L2, or L3 if you're doing an upright position. Keep the patient in true lateral position with arms up and suspend respiration on exposure. Proper collimation to approximately a 10 by 12 or 11 by 17 field size should be observed and should include the entire stomach and duodenal loop. No rotation of the patient should be visible as shown by the vertebrae and the stomach should be centered at the level of the pylorus.